Baylor has a chance this Saturday against UCF. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Baylor, your first listen every day. Thank you for making it that for you. My name is Cameron Stewart. I am your host, and today I am joined by the Baylor Lariat's finest, Mr. Jackson Posey, who is covering Baylor all sports, but is absolutely the stat man in terms of football. We work together on the China Spring broadcast. He is always bringing the great content and bringing the great numbers to us pregame. Jackson, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Cam. You know, I'm just sitting here uh, thinking about, man, It Baylor football is here. And it, it's not always the prettiest thing right now, but it's football season. And it, it could get a lot season. worse than that. Yes. Here we go. Week five. And Jackson knows it is it is football season. Just Love that for you, Jackson. Right yeah. Well, we're going to talk a little football today. In fact, all football. Uh, we're looking at this game Tomorrow afternoon at the bounce house, Baylor with, with an opportunity. Look, they are, they are not the favorites. Um, I think most of the country will be picking against them. A lot of Baylor fans will be picking against them, but there is a chance here this weekend as we get into a little bit more about this team. But Jackson, my question to you is look, last week was ugly, ugly, ugly loss. One that you need to put in the rear view mirror right away. And this is not something you can back up by stats. So I just want to ask you as someone who follows this team pretty closely, from what we've seen so far from the one and three Baylor Bears, do you think it's going to be easy for this team to just put that in the rearview mirror and head on the road for the first time this season and, and make a competitive game? Yeah, at a certain time, it's put up or shut up, right? You you get into these situations. It's the first road game of the season. A lot of times that's when teams will gel together and finally like, Okay, we're we're one team, we're one mission, we're getting into it, right? This this team hasn't had the chance to do that yet. And so going on the road to what's going to be, I mean, it's called the bounce house for a reason, right? Like it, it yeah. physically bounces, they jump so much. Uh that that's the type of environment that Baylor played in in the UT game. Other than that, haven't really been able to experience in over a year. And so going into an environment like that in a hostile road fan crowd, right? Like UCF is a very talented roster nearly beat K-State last week. Mm-hmm. I again, I think this is the time where you really see like is this team going to wind up putting it all together and the Texas game was sort of just a fluke that was, you know, you you don't really meet that minimum athletic threshold to really compete with them or is this just sort of the team that we have this season? And I think we'll learn a lot about the roster on Saturday. And look, neither of us can answer this question because we don't know. We have not heard anything on whether Blake Shapin is going to be able to play tomorrow against UCF. So my question to you then will be, I talked about it earlier in the week. I got mixed results in terms of what people think about the impact of Blake Shapin. What do you think the impact would be for a Baylor team to get that starting quarterback back and at least, at least keep the defense on their toes a little bit with a passing game? Yeah, I think the real impact that we've seen um, – watching another quarterback who isn't Blake Shapin out there is you recognize that game manager isn't necessarily an insult, right? Because Mm -hmm. Blake Shapin has the ability to command that offensive line to recognize and check out of plays at a really high level, reading the mic and understanding like how all all of those little nuances that you don't see from the stands, right? Because that's something you only see in the film room. And so uh, seeing a guy like Sawyer Robert, and this is not a Sawyer Robertson problem. Sawyer Robertson played air raid in high school and, and at Mississippi state. And he's like, Mm -hmm. just in this new system, this is not a Sawyer problem. He's, he's the, looks like potentially the quarterback of the future here. But Blake Shape and what he can do right now is go into a hostile road environment with the experience of having been to a Morgantown, right? Ha- having been uh, uh, outside of Waco and competed at high levels. And so, yeah, I, I look at Blake Shape as a guy who I don't expect to be playing on Saturday. I don't know if that's really worth, worth the risk if he's not at 100% because you are going into this game as significant underdogs. Mm-hmm. But if Blake Shape is out there, I think that really changes the way that you're able to call plays because you're able to be a little bit more aggressive because he you know, is a little more experienced taking the check down, you know, reading the defense in ways like that. And so I think Blake Shapin impacts the game in a lot of ways that you don't see from the stands. And that's why he gets so much criticism really is because yeah. you, you don't see all the things he does really well. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you talk about the game manager part, it's 10 and two and get the car in the garage. But I mean, Jordan Belfort got the car in the garage and in that infamous scene in Wolf of wall street. It's not always 
pretty. So that is why all that's prove your point. It's not an insult to call you a game manager. A lot of people got the car in the garage a lot better than that. So with that, you know, of, of Blake, maybe in, maybe out, probably not at a hundred percent, no matter what, are you in a position as Baylor to, to be able to save him for next week in a, in a big game against tech, but you know, you're, you're staring down the barrel of, of one and four here. Are you in a position to, to be able to keep him on the sideline? If maybe he's not a hundred percent, but if he's able to go out there and play. Well, I think the real question is, is this a game that the coaching staff thinks is winnable with Blake Shapin? Right? Because I think there's, their reasonable minds can look at that and say, I don't know. You know, UCF is a game going into the season that I, I had marked down as a lot. I was I was optimistic about this team going into the year. I thought they were going eight and four. Um, I'm going to have to eat an onion probably because of that live yeah. on a stream. Uh, but the, I, I had UCF marked down as a lot. This is a schedule vibe loss to me, right? Scheduled the, vibe loss in yeah. SVL. Yep. Yep. That we all yeah, know. We our RVO to the SVL. It's all it's all the same in the yeah. end, you know. But you you go in. This is the Big Twelve home opener for a team that has really been committed to. Okay, we want someone to please pay attention to it. Like they faked we need a the big time. championship. Yeah, we, yeah. Yes, literally just fibbed they, a national, national championship. championship for attention. And so now they finally have that attention. Baylor's going in. Um, their favorites in this like it's all looking good for UCF. Uh, even even with the injuries that they've sustained that I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about later. But this this is a game that I looked at going into the season and said, yeah, I, I think this is the game that UCF really uh, stomps on the gas and goes for it. And then maybe they slow down a little bit during the season. But this is this is like their Super Bowl. You know, I in this series, this is the Super Bowl. Yeah, and that, that is what worries me in terms of I, I said it earlier in the week when you were a bad team your biggest loss does not come against the best team. And I'll, and I'll use one that is familiar to our fans. 2017, 1-11 Baylor, they got just pummeled, pummeled by a decent Oklahoma State team with Mason Rudolph. I think they were 8-4 and four, and lost to number three OU by eight points. So that's, that's, that's what kind of worries me about this UCF team. It's not the best team on their schedule. You had that last week, and that was laughable enough. Uh, but this could be one where they get on the gas and they don't let up off the neck. And so with Baylor offensively, I said this before the game last Saturday, I didn't think they could cover the spread solely because I didn't think they could get the ball in the end zone. Lo and behold, it sucks being right all the time. They couldn't get the ball in the end zone. Do you? Th do, is there something that you saw last weekend or with Sawyer Robertson in general, assuming he's going to be the one that's under center, that would lead you to believe they'll score points and get in the end zone in this game. I'm not from the Texas game. I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. You like how I, mean, I set that one up there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's call. like you're, you're playing the NFL team. That's just, this is not a thing right now, you know, you, yeah. you but I, I think what we've seen Utah is the game that I think you're going to go back to throughout the season and think, okay, what did the offensive line do here that it couldn't do the week before or the weeks after? Great question. Right. Because yeah. that was a legitimately high level performance from a really talented offensive line. And so it certainly can, looked like we had turned the corner, you know, that absolutely. this was, that was one less thing to worry about. Yeah. And so if you can go into Orlando with that type of offensive line and say, okay, we're going to pound the ball down. Like, it, look, if if Dominic Richardson is at 100%, right, he's averaging like five yards a carry, even behind that offensive line, I think that's a big win for you. I think Dawson Pendergrass has really shown that he's able to fight for more contact, yards after contact. Like, this is a running back room that's really talented, and I think you can consistently get the running game going if you can cause them to respect the passing game at all. But the key there, it really to me, isn't even the run blocking. It's you have to pass block well enough that you can survive with, you know, four guys in the box. Right. If you're getting pressured with only four guys in the box, they're going to consistently drop seven and you're never going to have anybody open and you're not going to be able to run the ball because they're always always going to be keyed in the backfield. Right. And so it, yeah. it's got to be that pass blocking that holds up first that allows that run blocking to ultimately open up the field. And I'm wondering, is there something Baylor can do schematically there in terms of I said this to my dad who I was sitting with at the at the Texas game of. It's 100% of the time. I mean, if they're in a passing formation, they're going to pass. If they're in the 13 personnel, they're going to run, which they ran a lot of 13 personnel last week. And so as an opponent, you can just load up the box. So even if it's not necessarily successful, would you expect to see some different looks out there offensively for Baylor? Again, to bring up this term again, 
to just keep the defense guessing a little bit. Yeah, I think the problem with the Texas game is ultimately they just completely out-athleted Baylor, and there's not much you can do. Uh, I, I believe it was Dave Aranda talking in the post game about, like, yeah, we had to go for those screens and, like, the little gimme plays. And, and really, like, as much as that didn't work, that's what – you're quote unquote supposed to do in that situation, right? Like if yeah. you're if you're getting manhandled, that's been on successful the line, when when Grimes was, has been successful here at Baylor. That has been a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Grimes is a very talented schematic offensive mind, right? Like we we've seen his success, won a Big Twelve championship. Like like he's a really smart coach. I think he has problems sometimes being too smart. Right. And, and we saw that the yeah. second play. It's going to be a wake up call to Baylor fans. Right. But I actually, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. The, the second play of the Texas game, you have uh, Sawyer Robertson drops back. I believe it was a play action pass. And the tight end had to come all the way from the left side of the line to block the edge rusher on the right. And that you, you just never have a shot. And if it works, it's like, OK, this is a 20 yard gain. But it, you just never have a shot at that point. Right. Easy sack. Uh, you wind up having like third and 20 or something like that. And you have to punt the ball away. I, I think you have too many plays like, okay, we're going to run short side of the field toss again, where yeah. you're not trusting your personnel enough to be able to actually shine. And we've seen that with, okay, Richard Reese isn't the type of running back maybe who's the best for this offense, but he's arguably the most talented back there, right? And so yeah. you, you have to get him in rhythm. He's one of those rhythm runners where, okay, the more carries you give him, the more he's going to be able to shine. I, I think there's been a lot of, I, I would say some level of over management of, okay, we don't necessarily trust the offensive line to be able to get everything done. And so we're going to have to draw up these very specific plays to get guys room and it hasn't worked so far. And so I think UCF is a great opportunity of a team that's very athletic for a big 12 team, right? Not, not necessarily a top five team in the country, but yeah. very athletic for a big 12 team where you have the opportunity of, okay, we're just going to run a pistol formation and just run it up the left side with like, an ace set or something, right? Like you're not going in with three tight ends. You're not doing anything fancy, just halfback draw and see if that works. And if it does work, I think that opens up a lot for this offense because you're not having to have so many moving pieces. It's like, like a pitcher, right? Like yeah, moving piece, you have that delivery. It's less repeatable. You're going to start struggling at some point. Yep. And, and look, Baylor has obviously had a lot of insecurity when it comes to passing the ball. And Jackson, you know this about me. You, You know why I wear a cap every time I'm on here. First, I think it makes me look better, but biggest is my, insecurity which you can see hopefully right there so did did you see that jackson is that good enough i, was, I can't really see it. So, yeah thank nice you little reflection thank up there yeah so if you're like me and you've got that thinning hair then look th- this this next message for you because this today's show is brought to you by nutrafol and so if you need to take the first step to visibly thicker healthier hair for a limited time nutrafol is offering our listeners ten dollars off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code locked on college. So find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Again, that's Nutrafol.com slash men spelled out. I'm going to do that for you again. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men, which is M-E-N and enter the promo code locked on college. All right, Jackson, I want to get back to that point about Richard Reese a little bit. I'll, I'll fix my hat here for the people on YouTube. My head's already big enough. Uh, but talking about the Richard Reese point, he is a rhythm runner. That's certainly what we saw last year. Now, it's been a lot of mixing up um, uh, carries. And I think that's probably been a, a disservice to both Richard Reese and Dominic Richardson. Do, do you agree on that? I know nothing was really going to get going last week, but it, it just feels like, the offense as a whole, but specifically those guys aren't able to enter a rhythm like you would have with a like you did have with an Abram Smith and a Tristan Ebner. Yeah, I think the big thing there is is to me, Dominic Richardson. It it confuses me the fact that Baylor went after him, and I say that not because I mean he's obviously a talented running back, uh, leading the team in yards per carry right now. I believe at least among the guys who've gotten significant touches, certainly the most effective. Runner, Absolutely, you would think most on this effective roster. running back yeah. on the roster right yeah. now. <laughs> you know, very very well built to sustain some of the issues offensive line has has experienced this year. At the same time, you have a guy in Richard Reese who set the freshman rushing record last year, and you have two freshmen coming in, in Bryson Washington and Dawson Pendergrass, who've proven so far to be effective in a lot of the same ways that Dom Richardson is effective, right? Dom, and, and at the time you brought him in, I don't know 
how much the coaching staff knew about Quaylen Jones at that point, not being able to be on the team this fall. But it, in hindsight, you're like, I, I don't really understand how this room was managed exactly. And now that you do have those four guys who you're like, okay, yeah, this, this guy could probably get the bulk of the carries and we wouldn't feel that bad about it. It really does start to become difficult at a certain point to say, okay, how are we going to divvy up these carries? Right? Because Richard Reese clearly once he's in space is the most dynamic running back, if not player on this offense. But Dom Richardson is maybe the only one right now who you really trust to be able to get into space. Yeah. Right? And, and Dawson Pendergrass is the guy who you trust when he doesn't have any space. Right. And so uh, it, it really is this weird back and forth at the moment. I think it, it's talking about the, the rhythm idea, right? Getting these guys carries. I think the most important thing that you can do right now is pick one or two running backs and say, hey, we're committing to you. You're the guy. This you're week. the guys. You're, you're getting the carries here. Absolutely. And, and look, yeah. maybe that's Richard Reese. Maybe that's Dom Richard, whoever that is. Pick a guy and say, okay, you're getting you're getting 20 carries this week. Because so far, that, that's just not happening. No, nobody's been getting that type of bulk. Dom Richardson leaves leads the team with 36 carries in his three games. Richard Reese has 29 carries. Like, like this team does not have one guy getting the bulk of the carries. And I think when you do that and you play three running backs on every drive, right? How how do you get a consistent grasp of what's going on with the offensive line and the defense? How do you get that level of chemistry on the field? I think that's really hurt this rushing attack because you're putting in the guy who theoretically is the most optimal for that situation, but it winds up just sort of having a debilitating effect uh, in, in the aggregate. Yeah, and and that's been that's been up and down for them this season. The run game mostly down. The offensive line, which we've talked about, has been up and down. The defense as a whole has been up and it's been down, and a lot of it down in terms of Baylor is the, is worst in the conference, both in points scored and points against, and points scored per game and points against per game. So it's not been a great statistical season. Now, that said, we've seen some flashes from this defense, especially that Utah game we were talking about earlier. I mean, there was a point. I mean, they, they, didn't, they kept him out of the end zone until the last two minutes of the game. I know that's a loser stat. I know that doesn't win you the game, but it was impressive, especially after what they did the week before. This UCF team, much better passing team than Baylor. They could make some explosive plays. Was the defense more of the problem last week going up against a number three team in the nation in Texas, or was it, or has it been kind of the cards they've been dealt in terms of just an atrocious offensive performance so far this season. Well, it's definitely some of both. Um, I doesn't would, help, does it? <laughs> yeah, no, it does not help. I, I think I think you sort of can go game by game and say, okay, in the Texas game, it really wasn't the defense. You know, like like the defense played a real and and special teams played a great game. You get yeah, lost, special you get teams definitely once there, right? But uh, I I think that in the Texas State game. Um, it was clearly like the defense was struggling. Uh, and that's that's with Blake Shapen still in there, right? And then once once you get sort of sort of further into the season, the Utah game, the defense played great. Uh, and in the Long Island game, aside from a couple drives later there, right, where they where they're able to march down the field a little bit, the defense was really able to hold firm. And I, I think one of the interesting things with this defense is you're giving four different freshmen significant playing time. Right. You, you got DJ Coleman at safety and you have Carl Williams at corner and you have Caden Jenkins at corner. And those have been, in my opinion, the three bright spots from the defensive yeah. backfield. You also have Trey Wilson, uh, who I know went down with an injury last week. I don't know what his status is moving forward, but you, you have all of these young guys making significant contributions. And it, it feels like the defense is sort of still figuring out what it is. Right. Because you yeah. you have some sometimes right like in the Utah game, you see the linebacking core really stepping out and being like, OK, we're the guys we're going to dominate. Come watch this. They took control of that game. Yeah, Ab absolutely. Mike Smith, uh, Matt Jones, like th those are the guys, That's which sounds I'm like just by the way, which just sounds like Madden creative players. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing it, Matt Jones and Mike Smith are leading our defense this year. Darn it. Yeah. Get behind yeah. that. I mean, look, if you give them like cool nicknames, they're like famous, you know, Got they're to, like man. all big club selections, point. right? Like, but they, they've legitimately been carrying this defense so far. And that's the heart and soul of it. And so I, I look forward, UCF has a fantastic offense, but this game is going to be won or lost by the Baylor offensive line. This, mm, I, that's not great to hear. <laughs> that's not <laughs> giving me a ton of confidence, but go ahead. I, I think this defense has proven that it is 
improving every single week. Um, I, I look at Caden Jenkins as like the big example of that, right? Like he's consistently involved in every play. And when, look, I, I know in some of the press conferences, the players have been like, yeah, we just got too much juice, you know, like the problem is not that you have too much juice. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> not from what we've been seeing. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, nothing that we're able to see in the game says that there's too much juice going on. Caden Jenkins has juice, you know, Mike, Mike Smith has juice and, and you look at you look at these guys who are leading the defense and I think that is a mentality that will be able to grow and that the rest of the defense can really hone in on right I don't see at this point someone on the offense who is that counterpart right Dawson Pendergrass I think is doing yeah. a great job but it's tough to ask a true freshman to be you know that type of guy right but on the defensive side I think you have a couple of guys who are really stepping up and I think that if you're able to consistently run the ball on UCF, that's the only way that you're going to have a chance is consistently gashing them and averaging five plus yards per carry. Because even even a 60, 70 percent healthy Blake Shapen, I don't know, is going to be able to give you enough through the air to be able to win that game. So I think you're going to have to win it or lose it in the trenches. And I, I, I'm we, we can we can <laughs> wait and find out. That I, could be scary. That definitely could be scary for Baylor fans. So you're telling me, Jackson, that drives are going to be a big part of that. And I, I, I tend to agree with you on that. And look, passion, drive, patience. What do those three things have in common? Well, it's what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what brings your ride or die and keeps it alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, all of that great stuff. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed not only to fit your ride every time, but we'll also give you your money back if you don't. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash. So with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebay.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and yes, exclusions apply. Well, Jackson, going into the last part of our show here, day a day out, there's, a, there's hype on the UCF side for sure. You talked about it. Big 12 opener, they've been waiting. Big 12 home opener, I should say. They have been waiting for the chance to be up in what they consider the big time. And yet, this Dave Aranda tenure here, even when it's been good, has not been solid on the road. You think back to the BYU game last year, terrific atmosphere. They did not do well. Well, they forced it to double overtime, but they lost double overtime against a team that was also not very good last year. Uh, and then two years ago, even the first true road game was that Oklahoma State game. They lose that. I'm not counting the Texas State one, which they only won by nine points the year they won the Sugar Bowl, uh, but losing at Oklahoma State that year as well. So is there is there a problem with this coaching staff getting Baylor ready to play in these true road environments? I I think. We, you can look at the coaching staff and say, is this a team? Is this a coaching staff that's able to get the players ready for games in general? Right. And yeah. I'm not talking schematic. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. Not, not schematically. Right. But just literally just mentally engaged and focused. Are and, there guys ready to go out there and hit and yeah. execute the game plan? Is, is the game coming to them or are they just going to get it? Right. And right now um, with the exception of a couple guys that we've talked about, right. I think a lot of them are just letting the game come to them. And when you're wanting to run, say, a, an RVO, right, that reliable, violent offense that they talk about, you have to go out and hit, right? You have to be the one initiating that contact. And whether it's on, whether, look, whether it's at home or on the road, I think that is equally important. And so when you look at last season, when you end the game on the, what was it, four or five straight losses, yeah, it's a home game against K-State right? It's the blackout game. Yep. It's a home game against TCU where you're in it till the very end. Um, you know, road against Texas and that's whatever. Right. And then short drive. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you have the short drive up to Fort Worth for that, that game that Oof. no one wanted to play in, in the cold. Yeah. Right. Like I, I don't know that the issue is getting ready for road games. I wonder if this season it's looked like there's been an issue 
motivation wise of like who on this team can you look at who's visually upset when the team is losing hmm. right who's or, who's or even won't... i mean i mean our pal drake has brought it up before and it might be a little overblown but who's even excited when they are doing something good yeah and last year right you you have a nose tackle who is really up there dancing around all the time right yeah. getting everybody ready this year i i really i've been looking i don't know i'm sure there is one i don't know who the vocal leader of this team is right and there are guys on this team right like a tj franklin and a gabe hall who are going to put in that work every single time yeah. right and i have absolutely no no doubt that they're leading the team in that way but who is the guy who's going to step in there and say, hey, we're turning the ship around. Hey, we're this is not happening again. And who's burying the football in the practice field? Absolutely. Where is that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw a story on ODB the other day. Who It was like, oh, yeah, we need, you know, Dave Aranda needs his uh, his swallowing the worm moment. Right. And it's yeah. like, OK, well, you could also have a player do that. Right. Like, I don't know that Dave Aranda is going to do something to fire everybody up. They watched the Godfather or something this week or last week. Great. Sure. Yeah. It, it didn't work. Great film, Jackson. Great film. Yeah. So family. Family. <laughs> yeah. 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 Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel could never, but yeah, I, I, I do wonder like, is there a guy on this team? Cause I don't know if it's coming from the coaching staff, which was okay. Two years ago, right? Two years ago, you have a guy like Jalen Petrie or Terrell Bernard or whoever, who's going to step up and do that. Yeah. For this team, is there a player who's going to be willing to step up and, you know, turn everybody around, rally everybody around the flag? I don't see it right now. I would love for it to happen, but I don't know if, if you have names throw them <laughs> at me because I don't know who it is right now. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty generic names, but like, like the linebackers and, Mike Smith and Matt Jones and John Sampleton. Yeah, all those. Jackson, we got to wrap this thing up. So what I want from you, these two answers right now, does Baylor have, and it, or I should say, what would be Baylor's advantage over UCF? And then I want, and then I want to score a prediction from you. Yeah, I think Baylor's uh, advantage over UCF is definitely in the linebacking core. Um, it's it Baylor has consistently shown time and again that they're able to not only pressure, but I think we've seen improved every week the way that Mike Smith has been able to cover um, even running backs. I, I wouldn't trust him, you know, consistently on wheel routes or anything. Right. But uh, for, for what he's asked to do, he's really effective in that role. So yeah, absolutely. The linebacking core and the special teams unit, right. Ever since, ever since you bring back Mount Powellage has been really effective on both sides of the ball. So I, I would say those are the two areas where you look at for the advantage uh, score prediction wise, uh, Come on. not not feel not feeling too confident, oh. Cam. I'm, <laughs> Yikes. I, yeah, I'm I'm gonna throw out thirty four to seventeen. Thirty four seventeen, doubling them up. That all right? Are you gonna pick a winner, or should we just leave that to the imagination? You know, I'm we we can leave that to the imagination, but I think I think Gus Malzahn is gonna have a fun night. Well, you know what, Jackson? I'm sick of your negativity, and I've always said that. I'm going to come in and be the optimist here. I'm picking Baylor in this game. Okay. You know why? Vibes? Yeah, because kind of why not? You know? yeah. I, I think I think statistically this matchup is actually not that bad for Baylor, um, especially if they can establish the run game because we are still putting hope into that. I think it's – enough scoring because they can both rip off big run plays and these are the two worst rushing defenses in the conference but with that there still won't be that many possessions so i am giving baylor 24 to 20 can, can i throw shocking out, the nation and beating an unranked ucf can i throw out that last week uc ucf's running back or ucf allowed k-state's running back 293 scrimmage yards Yep, just pencil that in next to Richard Reese's name this week. Pencil it in. Pick a guy. Rhythm. There it is. Jackson, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we can't wait to get out and watch this game on Saturday afternoon. Hopefully, Baylor's got a chance in this one. I think the stats will back that up. Jackson, thank you so much again. This has been, always will be, thank you guys for tuning in and making it your first listen every day. Locked on Baylor.